Are you dreaming right now? Let's begin with a simple but unsettling question. How do you know you're awake right now? If you've ever had a vivid dream, you know how convincing it can be. You see people, feel emotions, walk through entire worlds, all while lying motionless in bed. In a lucid dream, you can even make decisions, question reality and experience freedom within a fabricated world. Now think, if your brain can create that kind of convincing experience while you sleep, what's stopping it from doing something similar right now? This question isn't just metaphysical poetry, it's the heart of one of the most famous philosophical inquiries of all time, launched by René Descartes nearly 400 years ago. And today, modern neuroscience, cognitive science, and dream research are circling back to this ancient puzzle. What is consciousness? What is reality? And could it be that waking life is itself a kind of dream? In the 17th century, French philosopher René Descartes set out on a bold intellectual journey. He wanted to build knowledge from the ground up, but he realized that almost everything he believed could be doubted. His senses sometimes deceived him. His dreams felt real. How could he trust anything? So he performed a radical thought experiment. What if everything I experience is a dream? Or worse, what if there's a powerful deceiver manipulating my perceptions? The only thing he could not doubt was the fact that he was doubting, that he was thinking. And so he arrived at his famous conclusion, cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore I am. Descartes gave us one of the earliest articulations of radical skepticism, the idea that the world we perceive might not be real. And today, that very idea echoes in quantum physics, simulation theory, and lucid dream research, suggesting that Descartes may have been ahead of his time in more ways than one. Now let's jump to the modern lab. Neuroscientists have studied dreams extensively, and what they found is nothing short of astounding. During REM sleep, the brain becomes highly active, visual areas light up, emotional centers ignite, but the prefrontal cortex, the part responsible for rational thought and skepticism, becomes less active. That's why in most dreams we accept bizarre events without question. You could be flying or talking to a cat in a trench coat, and it just feels normal. But here's the kicker. Brain scans show that dreams activate many of the same neural pathways as waking perception. The dream brain and the awake brain can look shockingly similar. Lucid dreaming research adds another twist. When dreamers become aware that they're dreaming, prefrontal activity increases, and they can begin to control their experience. This means your brain can simulate entire realities, complete with logic, emotion, memory, and selfhood, without any external input. So, if your brain can do that while asleep, how confident are you that it isn't doing it now? Lucid dreaming is one of the most powerful tools we have to study consciousness from the inside. When you become lucid in a dream, something profound happens. You become aware of awareness itself. You realize the world you're experiencing is not out there. It's being generated by your mind. You can touch walls, fly through skies, ask dream characters questions, and they respond. And yet none of it is real in the material sense. This opens a portal to understanding how waking life may be structured similarly. Many advanced lucid dreamers report moments of absolute clarity, even spiritual awakening, when they realize that reality is more fluid than we're led to believe. Some even say that lucid dreaming prepared them for waking life to feel more dreamlike, more malleable, more mysterious. The boundaries between waking and dreaming begin to blur. And this blurring is at the heart of mystical experience across traditions. The realization that reality is not fixed but created moment by moment by consciousness. Fast forward to today. Philosophers, physicists, and tech entrepreneurs like Nick Bostrom and Elon Musk are reviving Descartes' question. But with a digital twist. What if instead of a deceiving demon, we're living in a simulation? According to simulation theory, it's statistically likely that some advanced civilization has created a virtual universe with conscious beings inside it, and we could be among them. The logic is unsettling. If simulated minds can exist, and civilizations evolve to create many simulations, then the number of simulated realities would vastly outnumber base reality. Which means, 
we're probably in one. Sound crazy? Not to quantum physicists. The observer effect, quantum indeterminacy and probabilistic wave function collapse all suggest that reality responds to observation. In other words, consciousness might be part of the rendering process. A dream, a simulation, a construct. The brain might not be decoding a pre-existing world, but co-creating it. Long before Descartes or Bostrom, Tibetan Buddhists developed a powerful spiritual science known as dream yoga. Practitioners learn to remain conscious through dreams and eventually through death itself. The goal to realize that all experiences, dreams, thoughts, sensations are empty of inherent reality, but full of luminous presence. This is not nihilism. It's awakening in dream yoga. You train to recognize the mind's role in creating form in both sleeping and waking states. As the Bardo Thodol, Tibetan Book of the Dead, teaches, all phenomena are projections of your own mind. In this view, waking life is not fundamentally more real than dreaming. It's just a different mode of consciousness. One dream flows into another, and the key to freedom lies in becoming aware, not of the dream's content, but of the dreamer. Awareness itself, pure, luminous, groundless presence. That is the stable point behind both waking and sleeping. That is the self behind the self. So, are you dreaming right now? Maybe not in the nightly sense. But if dreaming is defined by immersion in a simulated experience generated by the mind, then yes, you are dreaming, right now. The walls you see, the sounds you hear, the boundaries of your body, they are all filtered, interpreted, and constructed by your nervous system. You never see the world directly. You see a rendering, a controlled hallucination, a dream with rules, but sometimes the rules bend. In altered states, deep meditation, trauma, or awe, time slows. Boundaries dissolve. The dream slips, and you glimpse the space beneath it, the awareness behind the form. This is what Descartes intuited, what lucid dreamers experience, what mystics point to, and what modern science is only beginning to model. Consciousness is not inside the dream. The dream is inside consciousness. So where does this leave us? Maybe the question isn't whether we're in a dream or not. Maybe the question is, can we become lucid within the dream of waking life? To live not as sleepwalkers, but as conscious agents, awake, curious, reflective. Because even if reality is real, our relationship to it is always interpretive. And that means we can change the dream, shape it, soften it, question it, and maybe even awaken within it, like lucid dreamers do, like mystics describe, like Descartes dared to wonder. If you've ever felt the ground shift, if you've glimpsed the mystery behind the mask, share your experience in the comments. And if you want more journeys into the strange, beautiful edges of consciousness, subscribe. Because here we don't just dream, we wake up together.